Now, uh, Johanna Ruprecht, uh, the policy organizer for the Land Stewardship Project, is going to give us, I've asked her to give us an update on, on the Minnesota policy issues, but before that I'm going to mention, you know, I, I, had, I had hoped that I'd be able to say to you, well, these are all the permits that are ahead of, for communities um, in the area, and as I started to look those things up, I realized that would be impossible to collect all that information together and to have it be current. So we, we opted to do this instead, but uh, to tell you a little bit about where things stand in the state, she's going to talk about where the state rule process is and so on. But I want to let you know, if you're not familiar with it already, I've got a copy in the room of the guidelines that the Minnesota Environmental Quality Board put together that for Minnesota communities that are facing um, issues of industrial so with the sand mining. And uh, talk with me about that if, it, if you're interested in knowing more. So with that, Johanna. Thanks, Katie. Um, I'm going to just briefly touch on a few key elements of where we are now, especially in, in the Minnesota level, um, what's on the table. First of all, I'd just like to introduce, um, I know many of you are Land Stewardship Project members or are familiar with LSP. For those of you who aren't, uh, we're a nonprofit membership organization. We're founded in 1982 um, with the mission of fostering an ethic of stewardship of farmland, um, supporting sustainable agriculture, and developing sustainable communities. We're based here in Minnesota. I work out of our Southeast Minnesota office in Lewiston. Um, and we got involved in working on the Frag Sand issue really because our members, we have hundreds of members here throughout Southeast Minnesota, uh, were coming to us um, several years ago seeing what was happening in some places in Wisconsin with this industry, what was being proposed in Southeast Minnesota. Members really came to us and said, you guys need to take a stand on this. This is a stewardship issue. Um, what this industry is about is really the opposite of the kind of land ethic that we stand for. Um, and what this does to communities is fundamentally opposed to the kind of sustainable, thriving, healthy rural communities that we want to see. Um, and so we've been involved in organizing to stop direct sand development, especially in the Minnesota state level and on the local level in various places, especially in southeast Minnesota, for about the last three to three and a half years at this point. Um, and during that time, definitely the what we've seen in terms of the track record of this industry where it's been established and where it's um, tried to establish itself certainly hasn't gotten any better. Um, one thing I want to draw folks' attention to, um, many of you may have heard about this. If not, um, I have some, I don't think I have copies, but I have some uh, handouts about it over on my display there. This is a report that Land Stewardship Project put together last year um, it's called Breaking the Rules for Profit an analysis of the frac sand industry's violations of state regulations and manipulation of local governments in Wisconsin. And um, what, this, what we found by looking at data from the Wisconsin DNR from media reports, about 40% of the frac sand companies operating in Wisconsin have been in violation of state environmental regulations. Um, it has to do with water and air quality. And in general, regulations are fairly weak over there, which means you have to be doing something pretty serious to actually be found in violation. Um, but that's, that's the pattern of how this industry operates. Um, in addition, we looked at um, kinds of behavior of really manipulating and bullying local governments, um, misusing the annexation process, um, and when you add in those kinds of behaviors um, together with actual violations of regulation, over half of the companies um, in with, that are operating in Wisconsin are engaging in that kind of behavior. So that really indicates that um, this is not something we want to see established anywhere else. Um, yeah, but we've all, what we've also seen, and what I want to emphasize today, over the last several years of working on this issue, um, a really, really powerful movement um, has been born. And I think all of you um, here today uh, can recognize that, and that's why you're here. Um, it's a movement that where we support each other um, throughout our region. And in some of the headlines, you notice the way the media really likes to spin an issue like this is, oh, you know, it's, it's really big controversy. It's tearing communities apart. You know, people are fighting with each other. To some extent, things like that happen. But what also happens that they don't talk about is this brings people together. Uh, like all of us here never would have known each other if it weren't for something like this um, to have brought us together. And I think that's also important for us to, to think about and keep in mind too. Um, and remember the power that we do have and the success that we have had. Have we won every fight? Um, 
certainly not, but we're still going. We're going to be in it for the long haul um, for a long time to come. And um, one indication, I think, of the success that we've had at the Minnesota level um, over the last several years was the fact that earlier in this legislative session in January, a hearing was held at a House committee. Um, it was essentially an infomercial for the frag sand industry. They were industry representatives and lobbyists who were invited to testify, and citizens weren't. Um, apparently they thought that everybody who was up there over and over by the bus load two years ago had just gone away and forgotten about this. <laughs> of course we didn't. Um, and we made a big enough uproar at that time, basically forced our way in and uh, made citizens' voices be heard, that after that point this issue was not touched at the legislature. We didn't lose any of the ground that we had won. Um, do we need more protections? Yes, we do. but. This is a session when there's been a lot of bad ideas floating around at the legislature on environmental <laughs> issues. Um, a lot of things coming under attack, but we made a big enough uproar that they knew, okay, we better not touch any of that frag sand stuff um, because we're gonna get into trouble. So that's an indication of some level of the success that we've had. Um, what's on the table right now at the state level um, is the rulemaking process, the, um, the DNR, is involved in setting rules for mine reclamation, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency for air quality, um, and the Environmental Quality Board for environmental review. Um, now basically our perspective from Land Stewardship Project, we feel like there are some good ideas in those proposed rules. There's a lot that needs to be stronger as well. Um, right now the official drafts are still in the process of being written, so there will be more opportunities later on for people to comment and have a say on that. Um, in particular, Probably what's going to be some of the most helpful um, things coming out of that is strong environmental review requirements for frag sand proposals in Minnesota. Um, and that matters because environmental review is not really about um, how can you do a project right. It's more about taking a pause and taking a look at is this the right thing to do for a community at all. Um, and this industry doesn't really like having that kind of uh, close look taken at them and um, hard questions being asked. So making sure we have those strong requirements for when these proposals have to go through that process um, is pretty important. Um, and I just wanted to mention one major proposal that many of you are familiar with that is still on the table for Southeast Minnesota. We've successfully held off so far, but it has come back up again, is a company known as Minnesota Sands. Um, and they, originally we knew that they were proposing mines in three counties, Winona, Houston, and Fillmore. Um, they, because of citizen organizing, uh, made sure that environmental review law was enforced, although they were trying their best to debate it, made sure that they could not apply for any permits for that proposal until they went through an in-depth environmental impact statement. Um, and that company then went quiet for a couple of years, but just recently, a few months ago, came back and said, okay, we're going to pay up the money, we're going to get this study going. Um, it's been a little bit quiet since then, there's no new information submitted, but what we know now is that they're looking at mining, processing, and transportation in Winona, Fillmore, Olmstead, um, Goodhue, potentially Wabasha counties, um, and I don't think we should consider Houston County out of the woods um, for as far as their interest either. So that's something that really would represent a much bigger foothold for this frac sand industry in southeast Minnesota than anything they have so far. Um, so that's something that's a major goal of ours is to not see that happen. And I think that's because it would affect such a huge uh, swath of the region, I think that's something that a lot of us can um, be united around. Um, and so that's something that we're gonna be tracking very closely um, and making sure people know as soon as there's any um, movement on that, um, what people can do. And I have some, uh, some folks at other events I've been at may have done this already, but we have some comment cards available if people want to take a chance to have a say now about that environmental review, um, send a message to the Environmental Quality Board. What do you think are the issues with this proposal that they need to be aware of and paying attention to? Um, and then just finally I wanted to mention that there is a lot of local work ongoing, um, which many of you know about because you're the folks doing it at the county, the city, the township level. Um, all over the region, and there's been a lot of success on that that we want to hold up, um, especially in some cases at the township level, people successfully banning or keeping out the frag sand industry there. Um, we've been working with other folks to make that happen in other places. Um, at the county level, 
you know, and we've won some useful measures, um, and people, I would say, just about everywhere are still looking for more. Um, in Winona County, we're, what we're hearing from our members and other people there is that what we have is really too weak. Um, it's time for something more. So we're going to be working on a um, campaign on that level, hopefully eventually getting a ban or at least some much stronger restrictions in place in that county. So um, that's something I'm sure you'll be hearing about as we move forward. So, you know, really um, my main takeaway would be that we have at a lot of success and we should not forget that. If you look at what our region looks like now compared to what would have happened if none of us had done anything, um, if this, none of this grassroots organizing had happened, it's really scary to think what, where we would be today compared to where we are. And that doesn't mean there's not still a lot of work ahead, um, but people are powerful and organized people um, have the ability to make change. And so let's keep at it. Thanks.